okay, so Artie was coming out. He wanted to see Tom Petty. He said that to me. I said, I can get a ticket for you. We have an extra ticket. Uh-huh. And he says, good, you know, hey, yeah, I'm going to stay in a hotel. But I said, no, 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 no. You stay with me. Of course you come out and you stay with me. Uh-huh. So I was excited yeah. to see Artie socially, you know. Yeah. It's fun to do. So where do I begin? Yeah. So I guess I kind of, like... The helicopter. Beth, Beth and I were talking, actually. I never discussed this with Artie, but, you know, I said, Beth kind of even said to me, do you think Artie thinks you're fun? And I go, you know, I kind of, I don't think so. Wow, this is an interesting conversation. Yeah, so I said, and she said, you know, first what's going to happen, you know, if you want to take a nap or something? I said, yeah, Artie might bum out. It's like, you know, because like, what will Artie do till what the concert? What do you do out there? You nap? I'm all about I'm nap. All, I'm always napping. And, and, I'm, and I'm anti-social. So I said, she said, why don't you invite Ralph? So he can entertain Artie? So he can at least, because if Artie like Ralph, I go, I think Artie likes Ralph. You never know, you know. I'm not sure. Ralph. You're not sure. I said, it might be nice to have that dynamic going where I'm Artie has a you know, guy never hanging never. out there. And, and when you're napping, Ralph can take up the slack. Which actually was not a dumb plan because I come off a nap and I go downstairs and I see Artie and Ralph in the hot tub together. Yeah, we, 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 we went in the pool. Well, and we went for a walk on tub. the beach and had a couple of mini cigars. Did and then... hold hands? And no. Of course, Artie doesn't bring a bathing suit, but Ralph cut up a pair of sweatpants for Artie, made a, a mock bathing suit. Oh, I had no plan on. Uh, I had no plan on Being going in, in the pool. <laughs> you were so happy in the water. No, but then I looked at the pool. It was so inviting, you know. And I, was I mean, like... you're going to a guy's house, you know. You bring stuff. Artie was weightless in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I had my own room. My room looked out onto the pool oh, and yeah, my own I mean, bathroom. Well, what did you think he was going to do with you? Yeah, I put him in a sewer. <laughs> And I said, we took a walk on the beach, and I said, you know what, fuck it, that pool looks great right now. We had a few hours, and I told Ralph, go get a pair of scissors, and we'll cut up my uh, sweatpants. So that's exactly what he did, which was good. That's like a fashion project for Ralph. Most guys were punched in the face. That keeps him happy. So you were keeping him occupied. I bet it made him happy, as Robin yeah. points right, out. Right. So I bet he did a great job. He did, it. actually. They I were very... actually saw the babies, so but you were in the water the whole time. They're very even and everything. But I would like, you know, maybe and in the I realized, future. I realized, too, you wouldn't come out of the hot tub until I left. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, yeah, I don't like, that like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You let Ralph see you in your suit. Well, Ralph's microphone is on five hours a day. <laughs> well, it's funny because I'm, I'm sitting there and I go, boy, these guys, cool, you know. I said, these guys are like, already goes, I'm boiling, like chicken soup. Because <laughs> he's in the hot tub. And I, I said, hmm, you know, and I left and then I was walking up to my bedroom and I look out the window and I see Artie's emerging. Yeah, he sprung out of and the And I said, hot oh, tub. he didn't want to get out of the hot tub in front of me. Me and, me and uh, Ralph are trying to think of a rap uh, in case we got chicks back there at night, like how to pretend that was our house, so uh. we needed Howard to give us information about stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, what's but this, isn't what's it the... interesting that you think so much about what Howard's going to comment it's on? It's not totally true. Oh, I mean, look, I, look, Howard, I mean, I, I, I'm not uh, in the, like a young Starsky or Hutch at this point. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he doesn't realize I love him. I love him fat or skinny. Right, right. Yeah, he so, doesn't care. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, if only broads were like... <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, we, uh, so we, that part was fun, you know. Yeah, we, I, 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 we, I, they had an amazing meal set up. Uh, I mean, I can't even explain how beautiful the whole we, experience was. And food. It, was, it was great to hang with Artie outside uh, of the show. Uh, and it, I took a we, helicopter out there because I've never done that before. I've been on helicopters but never out to the Hamptons. I said, fuck it, I'll splurge. And that's kind of where the Ralph situation starts. Do oh. you want to start that story? I, I guess I could. And Gary's a part of this, too, by right. the way. Right. Well... So I said to myself, I'm going to go out. You know, Howard made this nice uh, invitation, and I said, fuck it, I'll splurge. I'm going to take a helicopter out there. Uh huh. And so I don't have to deal with traffic. And I found out there's a helipad literally yards uh, from, from well, Howard. I hope I don't. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it, right, it was right. a very convenient situation. So uh, I price uh, the helicopter. It ain't cheap. And no, it's not cheap at all. And uh, you know, Gary the whole time was like, "Please, like, let me pay you for half of this." But he was even more than he thought. And I was like, "Look, Gary, don't worry about it. It's it's fine. I, this I was going to do this anyway. I'm happy to have the company." Uh huh. Ralph, the last minute, sort of the, <laughs> the next the day before, says, "Listen, I'm coming. So uh, what time do I have to be at the?" At the... <laughs> he doesn't even ask you. He just assumes he can do this. No, right. no, no. I I checked out that it was okay. Oh, right, right, right. So uh, no, no. He he called the day before. All right. But it turns out, and again, it's just weird how stuff with Ralph just makes a minor 
adjustment. <laughs> Something goes wrong. The guy had to get another helicopter because it went from two to three people. Oh. But, so, it, but it was hold on, it was worse than that because I got really maybe the, the most insulting phone call I've ever gotten from Artie's assistant, which was he needed to know how much I weighed. <laughs> I swear to God. So then he goes, and I think at one point he goes, all right, 220 and 300. All right, we're going to have to get a bigger cop. <laughs> yeah, right. Because three guys needs a bigger cop because of the weight. Patty, a master in etiquette. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> So anyway, so they had to get a different, so, which I found out I was going to get this really cool helicopter that's sort of like a state-of-the-art thing, and now they had to switch it to a, no, a little bit of an older one. A Toyota with a wing. Yeah, the one they use for construction. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So, uh, so already, Artie's, you know, he, he goes, man, if Ralph's going to be late, I'm Right, I start leaving. stressing about that because right. I wanted to get out there on time and everything. Right. Uh, it turns out because of fog, we were delayed anyway. But but um, at no in point... In other words, it would have been quicker if they drove. In, in, in a lot, in some, not quite, but almost. almost. Yeah. There was a lot of fog, which fucked everything up. But we got out there on the helicopter, but at no point... At no point does Ralph even think about oh, yeah. saying thank you or look, can I pay? Right. How much <laughs> right. do you want me to chip in? Nothing like that ever comes. Can up. I tell you something? I, I get to the place first where the helicopter. Not that I takes, care, but again, my God. I get to the place first where the helicopter takes it off from. You know, so I walk in. I go, is this where I'm supposed to be? It, Ralph. I mean, I can't tell you he did anything wrong, but there's he, there's a way he walks in. As if it's his place. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like he walks in. They have like Hamptons magazines out. Like. There's another couple there. Ralph walks in, like, sort of doesn't look at them, like, picks yeah, up a magazine, just thrumming, thumbing through it, that. talking about how great the trip is going to be, as if he takes it every week. Right. It's just a funny way he is. Right. It's, it's Ralph. Ralph acts <laughs> as if, yes. Right. And, and so so I'll, I'll get through this, and then I'll hand the ball off to you no, at no, some keep point there. No, but no, I just, so, because it's, it's, a long, it's a long thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm intrigued. I could hang on every word. <laughs> so, so we get out there and... Oh, hang um, in on this one. Because they changed the helicopters. The car that was coming to get us um, didn't know what was the right helicopter. Okay. To get. They had information about the old one that would just do people. So now with just three people, with now with just new helicopter, the guy didn't know where to go. So indirectly, <laughs> we had to wait an hour for a car oh. once we landed. So it really was like we might as well have right, walked. Right, right. And, um, <laughs> and again, of course, you know, you don't blame Ralph directly for this. But it's just so funny that it's something Ralph caused indirectly that made this mayhem sort All of, of a happen. Sudden, it, it just wasn't a smooth trip. Yeah, yeah. And um, but uh, can I tell you, Howard? <laughs> Artie is stressing. The two of you guys are so... You guys stress out on so much stuff. Howard's having a little barbecue, and Howard's stressing because he wants it to be good, and he wants everybody to be on time, and now Artie's stressing that he's fucking up the barbecue, right, well, and you he's know like... What he's thinking he, about? He's freaking oh, out. Yeah. No, he's thinking about being late to Gary's party for dinner. <laughs> And how badly that went for him. Right, right, right. Oh, he right. screwed up the yeah, whole Yeah, but this wasn't his fault. No, but at one point, Artie, hey, Artie shut the phone and goes, Jesus Christ, I can't control the weather. I'm going to be, you know, he was just bumming out yeah, that he's going to he, be late. He, he was stressed out. No, I'm just saying Artie knows that he, he, you know, and he doesn't want it to happen again. Right. right. Actually, I had forgotten completely about fucking up Gary's number. But anyway, I did too. <laughs> I remember everything. I recall that I did. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, there's that nuttiness going on. And, um... Uh, and fine, it's like I didn't expect anybody to to, to to offer this, but still, it's a nice gesture. All right, so wait, so so, so we so get that. so you guys get to my house, right. and that's okay, it's fine. Get to the house, we're having a perfectly reasonable afternoon, and that night is the Tom Petty concert. Uh huh. And me and Ralph did hang. We sort of bonded the pool thing and everything. And right. We, we were having fun. So we started I mean, drinking. He, he did something. He made you a bathing suit. Right. Yeah, exactly. And these guys were drinking and having a good time. And we had a great meal when we, 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 we landed, and we started booing. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. We're all having a good time. And, you know, I can have. <laughs> Ralph. And Ralph. Kept Artie Company. Kept Artie Company as planned. <laughs> and uh, it just, you know, everything was going good. So I say to the guys, look, uh, we're going to have dinner at the concert, and uh, everyone be ready. i got a car coming and everything so we can all drink. Right. got a car coming at uh, 7 o'clock. Everyone be ready 7 o'clock or 7.15, right. whatever the time is. <laughs> I forgot about this part. <laughs> so... Uh, we're walking out the door. Everyone's ready promptly, 7.15. We got this thing timed out. And I look over, and Ralph is two minutes before 7.15. 7.13 starts making phone calls because he has to plan his trip to California, and he's trying to get airline reservations. 
So I said to him, you motherfucker. (laughs) I said, it's 7.13. He had all day. He goes, please, it's not 7.15 yet. It's two more minutes. I go, but we're ready now. We all want to leave. He's on one coast arranging for the next coast (laughs) plan. Yeah. I'm like, 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 you had all afternoon to call. Like, why would you call it 7.13? You said 7.15. I yeah, said, but he can't get anything done with an airline in two minutes. No shit. Exactly. So I said, yeah, that's up. the point. Absolutely. I go, I go hang up the fuck with fuck. Hang up the fuck. Okay. Which, by the way, thank God Howard was around to say that, because anybody else no, would not have hung up the phone. He would have made you wait. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I would have just left. <laughs> I, I was nice enough. This, I must have been in a good mood, because I said, okay, hang up the phone. We should just pull out and left. <laughs> now, keep in mind, now, keep in mind, I had had a drink at this point. Ralph had started drinking, right? So okay. he was about two or three drinks deep into the evening. All right. right. Okay. All right. So All now right. we go in the limo. We go in the limo, and... Uh, the, I'm not do you want to? No, no, no. All, All right. right, right. So we go in the limo. All right. There's some editing, parts. Editing. Yeah. How to that's edit. not fair. No, no, no. It is. <laughs> don't tell me anything you're leaving out. Just tell no. me a story. Okay. Well. I won't know if you don't say something like. Sorry, that. we haven't rehearsed this. Uh, <laughs> All right. So anyway, you're supposed to be a professional. Anyway, we get in the limo, <laughs> and Ralph starts. And he's got to pee. I have to pee. I have I to pee. I knew it. I was so, going to say he's got to stop to go to the bathroom. Well, wait. So I said, Ralph. Why didn't you pee before we, like a little kid, why didn't you pee? I, I didn't have to go at that point. I go, yes, you did. I said, it's five minutes into the trip. What the fuck is wrong with you? You can't pee. We have, there's no way to pee. Uh-oh. But not just so, saying I have to take a leak. Writhing around on the floor of the limo <laughs> like, like a second kid. grader going, like I got to get the, yelling at the driver. Yelling at dr- uh, Terry. Really what? rude. What do you mean yelling? Like, do an impression of what he was. Almost like, 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 you know, Terry is getting us, a, a really nice guy, is getting us to the fucking concert. He's driving at a reasonable uh, speed. Right. We, we pull up to the entrance, and Ralph, like a third grader, is, is rolling goes, around. Terry, where are we? Do you, do, Terry, come on, get us there, Terry. What are you doing, Terry? <laughs> I mean, like, screaming at him because he's not getting us there quick enough so he can piss. Oh, <laughs> so, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Is this a so, mental condition? Wait, wait, right wait. Now? This is nothing. This is nothing. And we all have another couple of drinks in the limo. You know, so. Yeah. Oh, now so the, he's the drinking night's ro- on top of. Right, the night's rolling. I don't remember him drinking in the limo. We both had a, we both had a drink oh, in the limo. Oh, did you really? Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. All right, all right. <sighs> so, I, I don't recall that. But, okay, because I don't think I was drinking, actually. Yeah, I've, I've been so sick, you know. Yeah. And I would never drink in a car. Like, like, to me, drinking, you know, these guys are really into drinking. We took a drink into the car from uh, your house. Oh, so you were yeah. carrying glasses. Yeah. Right, okay. Well, you know, just yeah, that's That's a rough move for sure. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we get to the concert. And now, there's like a lot of people there that I know and security people and things. Press. press and it's a press, red carpet. And it's red carpet and press. And uh, one of the guys, the security guys at the event says to me, yeah, you know, your whole group is inside. And there's one guy pissing (laughs) right in front of all of us. So I go, Are you kidding? He just pissed? Yeah. 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 He he, he just pissed. Yeah. So he makes us all kind of look like shitheads. Yes. You know what I mean? He's embarrassing me because. It would be one thing if you were doing it. Security it, guys it, are all laughing. Like, like Ralph ran out of the limo, ran by like the big entrance. It's a big publicity by event. By the way, you know. there's a tent right there with right. bathrooms. He could have just said, where's the bathroom? He would have been in three seconds. But, Howard, it gets better because you guys go in, right? So now my group comes in. It's me and Ross and John Hyde. And we walk in, and the security guard goes, oh, your posse just walked in. I go, wait. They go, Howard's over there. And I go, oh, cool. And they go, yeah, and there's some dude in the bushes. And you can see Ralph in the bushes peeing. <laughs> Yeah, in front of this event. But, but so anybody could have walked by and seen er, Ralph pissing. Yeah, everyone did. But the, but the part was that it now becomes not Ralph peeing in the bushes, but Howard Stern's guy is in well, the bushes. Well, that's what I'm saying. Right. That now you you pee in the bushes. Well, think about it this way, all right? Oh, we get out of a lim- we get out of Howard Stern's a limo, limo, and boom. Out pops a guy peeing. Right. You know, I mean, it's like <laughs> paparazzi like all over the place. Right, right, it's one right, of those right. Hamptons events, you right. know. Oh, so, what so, a boob. Yeah, a boob. <laughs> so, like, at this point, I'm like, you know, Ralph, stay away from me. I don't want to be near yeah, you. And yeah, I said, pretend you don't know me. And I said, if you start smoking pot, I don't want to be anywhere near you. I don't want a picture of me with anyone smoking pot. I don't want, you know, I don't want that drug thing. Right. I just don't. 
Uh, it's not a, an image that I no. condone. Uh, the pissing you know. is enough. Yeah, the pissing, <laughs> the pissing image is bad enough because people tag me as being a slob right, and uncouth and right, yeah. being an asshole. Howard Stern's gang rolls out of a car and starts peeing all yeah, over everybody. My entourage. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's disgusted. Artie's disgusted. I'm disgusted. Oh. And, you know, despite Artie's on-air demeanor, he's a pretty low-key guy. <laughs> like, we go somewhere and he, and he knows how to he behave. He knows how to behave himself. Because a heroin addict he knows how to <laughs> behave himself. Well, you know, I can, call, I can call an audible at the line at this point in my life. But I was going to say, even... it's not that Artie behaves himself everywhere but he knows oh, no. where to behave right yeah, yeah, yeah. Artie's like like the most considerate guy like, yeah. like when Artie left my house the bed was made I didn't ask him to do this the room was spotless when Ralph leaves my house I find a, like a, cigar, a half smoked cigar laying on the fucking bar <laughs> well, you know? like, well I shall find out he didn't plan on leaving exactly wait 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 wait, 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 wait. so anyway it's so great are you still oh, with this story God. I love it okay, uh, you know okay. uh, please yeah because this is such a ramp up so now I'm I'm livid because I hear you know everyone's talking about that you know some guy got out of Howard's car and peed all right, over the place right. so like I'm I'm just fucking out of my mind over this you know just sick and then um, if I could jump in for that I could tell you that. Ralph swears that he didn't take anything of any kind, but early on, right after he walked in after peeing, he went to the bar. One of my friends said Ralph dropped three drinks in a row. Okay. He just kept dropping drinks. He started drinking very heavily. Is he now having a problem? I, I, well, you tell me after this story. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, what's going on? You know, at some, you know when you're out with a group of people and you're all drinking... And, you know, oh, you know, your goal is to get at least lit. And at one point, one guy out of nowhere, like, how do you get that drunk? That's what happened with Ralph. Like, out of nowhere, Ralph had gotten very drunk, and which, you know, there were shots around. You could easily get drunk and just be drinking. None I mean, of us realized. I mean, I certainly didn't that Ralph was, like, really drinking heavily or what he was doing. Maybe he got some weed. From some, I don't know what he was doing. From what I could tell, he drank. And then when the concert started, he went up to the front and came back and, like, I was talking to him, and he kept dropping his iPhone and everything, but, like, he was perfectly coherent as far as I was concerned. Okay. Uh, did you guys agree? I mean, it yeah. wasn't like you knew he was shit thing. He was dancing obnoxiously right. and, and <laughs> running in, hitting into people, but the first in a way, like, he was just being sort of Ralphish. He wasn't being, like, you wouldn't think, my God, this guy needs help. The first tip-off that Ralph was really, really drunk was at the end, the show's over, and we're standing there, and this couple is a really a big fan of Artie. And the girl's pretty cute. And the guy's pretty average looking. And Ralph, it got to the point where Artie and I thought that the guy was going to punch Ralph in the mouth because the girl wanted to take a picture. They both wanted to take a picture. And he kept saying, you're really hot. Lose that guy. Fuck off. You can't be in the picture. Like, really obnoxious. Really inappropriate. This is the Ralph that got punched out at scores, I think. Right. Yeah, yeah he says really weird yeah. things. It was such a cool scene where at the very end of the concert, uh, I had pushed up front as well, and it's uh, it was me, Ralph, and Paul McCartney standing wow. within within feet of each other. And uh, I remember pointing that out to Ralph, and uh, uh -oh. Ralph's big thing was he wasn't into Paul. He, he wasn't impressed with Paul McCartney. <laughs> He's out of his mind. <laughs> That's what his. I don't know. He, he said something like, "I'd so be more anyway. impressed." And and and, uh, and I, he wasn't. He didn't seem that impressed. He was like, "I was like, wow, he's not well, bullshitting about that." Let me say something to you first. Ralph goes to see Beatles. Impersonators. Right. He loves. Well, the he's more impressed with that. Well, it ties in. It ties in the, the rest of it, though. Why he wasn't so impressed okay. with it. But wait a second. So, I I leave about uh, there's like three songs left on the set list, and I was like, well, I want to beat the traffic, and I want to go home. And I said to Artie, I'm you know, and all the guys, I'm going home. They're like, okay, don't worry, we're with Ross and a whole bunch yeah, of guys. Yeah, they had a way to get. They were going out for the night. Yeah. You know, they were gonna have boys night. We were out. gonna go. It turns into a club scene there at the end. So you know, they'd have a little bar area, oh, okay. and they'd bring out a DJ to play dance music. And it would have been a nightmare for Howard to try to get out of there. So we knew, we, you know, we had set it up earlier. Howard's like, on. He said, look, I'm probably gonna leave. You guys hang. And I said to Artie, if you want to. Come yeah. me or Ralph, I said, or any of the guys. I said, I'll right. give you a ride, but, uh, you know, they said, no, 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 we got it covered. Okay. So I split. All the guys, Gary, Artie, Ralph, all of them are hanging out. Like like Artie said, they have like a little thing. Mm -hmm. And then they decide to go to this place called Saracen. It's a restaurant, and um, it's got like a bar scene, and it's kind of fun, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I go there once in a while, really like it. And uh, so they have a, so they get in the car, and they all go, Ralph included. The dr he's already no. drunk, but he's going anyway. I guess, you know, but again, I'm already out of the picture. But these guys, you know, they said, yeah, maybe he was high or something, but they, no one really I thought he was that Look, at that him. point, I was what feeling was great, and, and, you know, Ralph was... See, but this was... The, the, the point Gary just brought up was the key change. Like, that personality. When, when we met that couple 
he was being so inappropriate. And that was after the Tom Petty concert and before we went to Saracen. Okay. So, like, at, and it was a great group of guys. We was like a guys in that. We were all having fun. It was Richie Notar. It was Ross. It was me. It was yeah. Gary. And yeah. um, uh, John Hine. Yeah. John Hine. We were all hanging out. But but Ralph, at that point, we said, look, Ralph might start a fight. we got to take care of him a little bit. We started to have the discussion. Okay. This was a really weird thing amongst ourselves. And John Hine says, if somebody punches Ralph, will you jump in? And I go, I don't know. It depends on what he did. I said, I guess I have to. I get, John Hine, full of truth here. <laughs> Ralph wouldn't want him around. <laughs> like, oh, really? Those guys have some issues. I don't know. They have to work So out. John was questioning whether he would get involved if Ralph got no problem. Yeah, he was like, glad if someone was beating the shit out of him. I don't know if I'd help out. But we had to have that discussion. Way, I hear Sal's pissed off. He thinks I invited John Hine. Yes. What is that all about? He what? found out that John Hine went to the concert. You invited him. I did. He's furious that John Hine somehow jumped the chain that Ralph's been here much longer, and why didn't you invite Sal instead of John? Well, Sal, who gives you your information? I don't know how John Hine ended up there. In fact, but I, I invited John Hine. I invited John Hine over my house for some some food. But don't tell, don't tell Sal. I did, but uh, you know. But the point is, Howard, it doesn't matter if, how if he did. got there. If you did, hey. it's thank you. Where do you get this information? No. Where do you conjure up this bullshit of yours? Somebody, uh, somebody told me. I just heard that John Hine went with you guys. I'm happy for John Hine. I, I saw him at the concert. Uh, I have no wait, beef. Wait, with... wait a second, John. Hold on. John Hine was there, and you. Nobody told you Howard brought him. You just assumed it, right? Well, th this is your gig, Howard. I mean, you're the ma you know you're the leader of the pack. The, I'm, dude. Artie came over. That's it. I don't care about Artie. I'm not the pack. I don't know how John Hine ended up there. I don't know what John Hine did for the weekend. I saw him at the concert. I had nothing. To do with it. I find that hard to believe. You're an asshole. So I'm, I'm you're just. Not I, even gonna I don't care. That he said that. I was just a little hurt. I felt that you're you know. Hurt. You could have done what John Hine did. Ask John Hine how he ended up there. I, I, I'm not the one who did. sold the website for a couple of mil. I don't have the money to pay three grand to see Tom Petty. So <laughs> you're assuming. You're making a wacky assumption. All right. Very good. Where, where, whatever angle I take. I'll be wrong on this, so I'm happy for you. I'm happy for John Hine. I'm just saying I was a little insulted, okay? Is, now, is that wrong? I'm be insulted if Why I didn't invite you. In, in other words, let's say I go to a Van Halen concert and John Hine is there. Are you insulted? No, and, and I'm happy. John, the issue's not John Hine. It's just that I felt that. I hate to say but this. Sal, you jumped to conclusions. I, hate I had to nothing say to do with John Hine. John, how did you end up at that concert? Uh, Gary invited me. Oh. Okay, there you go. Then right. get upset with Gary because John jumped you and Gary. Get yeah, I'm done with Gary. Me and Gary are over. <laughs> well, Gary and John are close. Yeah, I, mean, you know. I I just assumed it. it, it, it I just assumed that you invited John Hine. No, I had nothing to do with John. Although I, I did invite him over to my house when I heard he was out there. But yes, you did. How come you never made Which it? Which was very nice. Yeah. How come what happened to you? Uh, I was stuck at another thing that I, I couldn't get out. I was in Long Island City, and I couldn't get out to you in time. I wish Sal would kill himself rather than be stuck at anything. <laughs> well, let me just uh, say this for Sal. See, John Hine knew you'd be upset, and that's why he didn't make it. Right, right. <laughs> Smart move. All right, uh, Sal, I'm happy you. for you. You've got, you got to hear the rest of this story. So Yeah, I'm listening inside. It's brilliant. Yeah. All right. So we know now that Ralph is a little tipsy, but we're all a little tipsy, but who knows how tipsy he is. Right. We go to this Saracen's place. Yeah. All right. And now we get in there, and, you know, Ross is Mr. Plan guy. He, like, he immediately is able to assess the situation, and we go... Ross goes, look, this Ross place, is my... Uh, our friend. Ross Sapin, yeah, who we've talked Sapin about. Ross Sapin, who lives, works uh, here. Yeah. yeah. And, um... And we get in there, and it was crowded, kind of a scene and stuff, and a nice place. But Ross was like, ah, maybe a couple of drinks and we'll go somewhere else, you know. Uh, and the, we're like, fine, I don't care, wh whatever. And um, Ralph, we get, a, we get a place to sit. Ralph starts dancing. Dirty dancing. Like, With who? Like a bunch of well, that's, from, that's the case. Uh, like, a, like a woman who looked to be about 60. Yeah. In oh. really tight, like with bad plastic surgery and tight, real, like jeans. Oh, John, like did she look real old? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Artie's, How, Artie's being complimentary at this point. She, 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 was, she was heavy, and that's being, you know, kind. Fine. And this is from a guy, when you see a model walk in, he, he goes, knows. her ears are small and her middle toe's too long. Yeah. Yeah. He's out dancing with a chubby 60-year-old woman. And... Uh, to love dancing. it. Yeah, no, no. He's sort of like that really so annoying Latin music Artie, you hear at a feast. You know? Artie was like, hey, there's a bunch of old broads here. I'm, I'm going home. Oh, 
my so, goodness. So uh, Artie decides he's going to bail on the night. It's probably about 1 o'clock in the morning at this point or 1230. Uh-huh. We all decide we're going to bail on this place. We're all right. Now the, the group is deciding to leave. Okay. Okay. You know, so right. a couple of people, Gary included, go up to Ralph and say, hey, we're all leaving now. And they while say, he's dirty dancing? While he's dirty dancing. And Ralph says, you know, looks at them coherently and says, uh, look, man, don't worry. I'll catch up with you guys, or I'll just make it back to Howard's house, whatever. Well, Don't it, worry. It was actually worse than that. At yeah. first he said, I'll, you know, I'll be fine. But then he said, you guys go and come and pick me up on your way back. Like, that's what he wanted. Oh. Like, like, we're his fucking taxi drivers. Yeah. And Gary goes, there is no way back, Ralph. We're going. That's it. Either you leave now. Or you find your own way. Right. So, so he's so, like, fine, fine, fine. So, again, you get out in front of the club. And, 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 and guys, you know, some guys, like when you're with a group of guys, some guys are like, fuck them, especially if you don't know them. Mm. But Artie and John Hyde get out front. And they go, wait a minute. We can't just leave Ralph here. We have to, you know, we have to be sure. So, so John Hyde, Ralph is like, Artie was like, you know what? The guy might be fucked up. I'm going to go in, and I am going to make sure that Ralph understands. Well, no, first Gary had a turn. Then John Hine went in. He goes, Art, right, you're feeling guilty? I'm going to go in and ask him. So John Hine, and John is a pretty efficient so you guy. you see, the right? evening is all about Ralph <laughs> right, and getting him from place to place. But wait a second. Wait, wait. So Artie says, I don't care what these two guys said. I don't want to feel guilty. I don't want to leave a you guy. you got to go make sure for yourself. Yeah, because at this point he said, hey, maybe he's drunk and doesn't know what he's doing. This is the third time going back there. Right. So Artie goes in and he says, look, Ralph, we are leaving. We're, how are you going to get home? Don't worry, I'll get home, blah, 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 blah. Dancing goes, with a chick, arm around yeah, a right. chick. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The 60-year-old bro. Yeah. He's so, still with her. Yeah, so Artie says to him, do you know where Howard lives? He goes, he goes, take the address down. Write it down in your iPhone or whatever the fuck your thing is. So Artie's telling him, yelling out the address, giving him the address. Ralph goes, I don't know if I can work my iPhone. Don't worry, I know it. I know it. He repeats the address. Okay. I realize, you know, people sort of recognize this. I'm yelling out Howard's address in the middle of a dance floor at a but crowded okay. club. <laughs> All right, because Artie felt like... Whatever. He needed to take care of Ralph. Right. So, he, and he goes, Ralph, do you even have... He goes, if you have to get a cab or whatever, he goes, do you, do you have, have money? Do you have money? Artie hands Ralph 300 bucks cash and says, here, take this money. I want to make sure you can get home. Now, somehow Artie, Ralph... Artie, I don't have a way home. Somehow <laughs> Ralph... Exactly. Somehow <laughs> Ralph evokes this in people. Like, Everyone, right. like, yeah, I know but me. he's got the world taking care of him. Most people would just be like, Scott the Engineer, you forget that he's even there. It should be that way, but it's not. Okay. So these guys leave. Artie decides to come back to my place. He comes home. Now, at this point, there's zero guilt in my... He's in no he's danger. Right. He's got money. He's an adult man. He seems to be having fun. He made a decision. I'm staying here. And we left. That's what happened. All right. All right. I'm already asleep. You don't even know this has gone on. No, no, no. I've been in bed morning. for hours already. I mean, I'm not putting up with this nonsense. <laughs> you know, I don't give a shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. I went home with my fiance. <laughs> I yeah. had a perfectly reasonable <laughs> evening with her. So, uh, you know... I, I, I got to tell you, it just sounds exhausting, right? Yeah, oh my God! I would have, yeah. I would have, I wouldn't have even gone back in and asked. Ralph. So the split was, which is what Ross wanted to say. <laughs> that you were with Ross. <laughs> so the split was Ross and Gary and the other guys go somewhere else, and John Hine took me back to Howard. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's the split. So then, I wake up the next morning, and uh, I don't know. I I listen to my messages. Yeah. There's five messages from Ralph. Oh. I go downstairs. I see his room hasn't been used. Oh. No Ralph. Ooh. Never made it back. I go, oh, wow. Just before I listen to my messages, I go, Ralph must have hooked up with that abroad or something. I didn't know about any You didn't know about the 60 year No, I just said he must have hooked up with the broad. I know Ralph. Or he's staying at Ross's house or something. Went right. Down. He went yeah. home with somebody else. So I start listening to one panicked message after the other. It's like the first one comes in at about 4.30 in the morning. He wow. Goes, <laughs> he goes, dude, where do you live? I'm driving around with this guy. <laughs> And we're, 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 asked, we're stopping in parking lots asking if anyone knows where you live. Oh, and, no. And he goes, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I am. you gotta, you got to help me. So then he goes, um, then I listen to the next message. In fact, I have the messages. Why oh, did I you fucking gotta prepare play those? Them. I should be, you know, take a commercial break. I'll go get that lined okay. up with Scott. All right. Yeah. Because right. we got to hear the messages. I can't right. wait to right. hear them. All right. Take a break. Yeah. Take a break. Wait, you got you to hear these messages. <laughs> That's too funny. Uh, 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 hold the line. <laughs> we have so much to talk about this morning. I'm going to get back to this story, and then we're going to talk about the telethon was on this weekend, Jerry Lewis telethon. You know, I don't even think about that yeah. anymore. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I didn't get to see Jerry, see how he's doing. Well, I try and tell people that, like, when I was a kid, 
Like the Jerry Lewis, tel this was back when they only had like six channels or seven channels, you know what I mean? You didn't have cable? Was, there were three when you were a kid. Okay, well, <laughs> I was trying to make it. No, there was Channel 11, and there were some independents. There were six I'm channels. It was PBS, no. though. Uh, but anyway, uh, I was trying to tell people, like, the telethon was a big deal. Like, yeah. like people, you know, waited for the telethon. Jerry's going to be on all weekend. And now... You know, in the world it's of cable, irrelevant. it's just irrelevant. It's amazing, though. The guests. Well, I was thinking about it because I had some young people at my house, and they never mentioned it. It yeah. wasn't even a thing. It's not a thing. It was. I was a kid too, but again, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna be forty. <laughs> yeah, we're all getting older. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, so, I try to hang out with younger people to see what's oh, really going on. Good anyway, for you. So where were we in this story? So you're about to. So so. Ralph's calling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ralph's so calling I wake up you. in the morning. I see Ralph's bedroom is empty. Artie, I, I realize Ar Artie locks his door at night. I well, noticed you locked. Do you have a what? thing? Uh, because what I did was I tried to open the door to see if you were in there because I figured both you guys were gone and then the door was locked. Uh, I don't remember doing it. Maybe I did it out of habit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you lock yourself in at home? Yeah, no, in. not in the bedroom, bedroom. But I might have. I was a little drunk myself. I might have locked the. I guess like I locked it was the, the front door. door well, good thing you did, because I would have been in your room. Right. Exactly. Oh, you're smart. Who needs oh. you in there? Right. And always lock your door at Howard's house. So now I'm like all confused, and I go and you know as I regularly do, go to check my messages. Scott, do you have those, or does, is it a whole big process? I think it'll be like two more seconds, Howard. All right. Great. Just tell me the page to go to. So, but but what happened was, you know, Howard left us at the concert. Everybody's hanging, and having fun. I left Ralph with that money. Uh, those guys left the bar too. Ralph was dancing, having a good time. I made it home about 2 a.m. John Hine drove me home. By the way, me and John Hine got pulled over by a cop. What? <laughs> Yeah, John Hine of all people. So John, John doesn't even drink, right? Well, no, no, no. He didn't get pulled over because of that. He got pulled over. We were doing 40 and a 25 down the Hamptons main drag, uh -huh. and he was taking me, doing me a favor, taking me to Howard's, and I felt awful. This really cute chick. A cop. I mean, but cute. Like, you know, like you'd go, well, there's a, there's a, there's a hot chick. Pulled us over, and um, I felt so bad. I said, I'm going to be obnoxious right now. And I said, Miss, uh, my name's Artie Lang. I'm from the Howard Stern Show. And you Let know, me guess what you said. You said you had a 40-inch cock. <laughs> You would do sexual favors to get out of the ticket. And she said, you know what, don't worry about it. She goes, I love Howard. Uh, I'm just giving uh, you a warning. And he, uh, she was going to get a fucking moving violation. Oh, wow. Artie used my name to get out of a ticket. I use my name, and I don't get out of a ticket. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I've done that, and cops have given me tickets. What? Well, like, I'll go, you know, hey, um, Howard Stern, the guy in the rating goes, oh, yeah, 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 I know who you are. And he, and goes, he keeps writing. And he writes a ticket. <laughs> see, the move is just to let him see who you are, right. I think. But... Yeah, I never say. And, you know, sometimes they recognize me, and then they, they're they nice. Oh, right, you say right away? Yeah, I go. They, I have the PBA card, and they go, oh, where'd you get this from? And I said, well, I do a lot of charity work for the police. Oh, Sorry, John I told me that never one. Pull up I said, they go, where'd you get this? I do a lot of charity work for the police. Oh, how do you do that? I go, well, I work on the Howard Stern Show. We do a lot That's of stuff. That's a good one. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, I'm going to say I'm from the Letterman show. See what that gets me anywhere. <laughs> go to, go but to I felt so bad for John. I said, I'm going to be like a little bit of a douchebag and say it out loud. And then uh, she, she, could, she couldn't have been cooler. And I'm telling you, she was hot. So we're, we're lucky because John's the only one of us that doesn't drink. Yeah, he was completely so. Uh, let's go to Bill, who wants to say hello. Bill, go ahead. Hey, uh, welcome back, Howard. Thanks, man. Um, listen, this Ralph story, the only way it's going to be any way interesting to anybody but you or maybe robin is if R ralph dies or gets arrested or well you gotta hold on, gotta hold on. well sir that would in. be great <laughs> <laughs> get this face punched in is, are you not enjoying this sir because i did a, a, a no, random no, i'm really listening howard i, I just right they just hate ralph and yeah, yeah. Love to hate ralph. okay because yeah. i did a random check i said is this interesting to everyone or is it just to me and artie and the guys who were there and and everyone said no 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 we're all guessing right, no, it's, it, we're yeah we're we're just leaping ahead and seeing what this will mean for Ralph in the future. The messages will make it better. There are Gary preview page one in green. Okay. Thank you. So I so I get up and I get this message. Give me a sec. Okay. Here we go. This is the first message. Hey man, I know you're sleeping, but um I have no uh place to go. You know what? Uh, we're going back to the city, I think. Fuck, man. Uh, these people. Uh, these chicks were throwing up on the side of the road. Oh, my God. This is so fucked. All right, well, can you pack up my shit? Okay, thank you. Bye. So now it's about 4.30 in the morning, 
and he's going back home. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? So that's here? the first message you get. You have to yeah. be completely puzzled. No, I'm puzzled. Yeah, right. so yeah I, how did he get so out of it? Then the next one is time stamped, I think, around 7 in the morning or 7.30. Hey, now. Hey, um, so I'm uh, in Jersey City. I, what a fucking nightmare, man. Fucking guys ditched me. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know where to go. I couldn't find your house. Went up and down the street, couldn't find the street. And so um, I had to go down the bus. And, oh, my God, what a fucking... Just what a fucking nightmare. Fucking douchebags. They're douchebags. Cocksuckers. <laughs> Fuck. All right, man, I'm going to sleep, so um, I'll talk to you during the day. Just uh, throw my shit in a bag and give it to Artie, you know. I got uh, I got a shirt in the closet and uh, some stuff in the bathroom and just and whatever, you know, underneath the TV to the right over there. Just throw my shit in a bag, and I'm going to sleep. All right, man. Thanks, man. Bye. And after all that drink, he knew exactly where everything was. You hear that yeah, description? Yeah, he sounds very now, lucid. He sounds very alert and all yeah. this other shit. I'm like... What the hell is going on? Yeah, then the, what did they do to him? And then the third, and I'm like, well, what did these guys do? And I'm dying to wake Artie up, but I go, you know, Artie slept like Artie one o'clock. Artie locked the door so you couldn't. Yeah, I like, was in weekend mode. I put the did air conditioning on. you sleep until noon or something? Well, on a night out, you know. I I, I got home, I didn't get to sleep till about 2.30, and I put the air conditioning on about 58. And he's calling these guys like cocksuckers and fucks, and I'm like, man, they really screwed him over. I don't know what's going yeah, on. what did they do to Ralph? And then I'm like, you know, uh, hey, douchebag, could you uh, uh, put some cookies in my bag, too, I mean, please? Some of Marty's cookies, like three or four. That would be very good. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I can't believe I'm home. <laughs> fucking cocksuckers, man. <laughs> fucking asshole. Fucking. Oh. I had to, oh, I'll tell you, I had to fucking scale the side of my building to get my house. What a fucking pig, fuck, 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 fuck. All right, bye. Just give me some cookies, though. So we get it. So Artie wakes up. All the guys come over to my place because we're going to have a meeting about what went down. So I finally wake oh, up. A big summit. I yeah, wake up at noon. Over and Gary, I, uh, I make it into the kitchen. I can barely move. Like my 1 p.m. I wake up and I see Howard and, and Beth and they go, did you hear what happened to Ralph? And I'm like, oh, fuck, what happened? Right. And then I hear. <laughs> so we tell, about we tell him all this and he goes. I fucking gave the guy $300. I went in 20 times and said to him, Ralph, I'm going home now. Do you know how to go? He goes, this is, he goes, this is my worst nightmare. He goes, I, I never want to ditch a guy. I never would right, do that. Right. He goes, I'm, I'm fucking mad. I'm outraged. There was no goes. indication. Well, I was really pissed because, look, the only, the only way we'd be in the fault is if we sort of knew that Ralph was in a blackout or something. Right. But of course we didn't know but that. Wait a minute. Hell. You know what? There was no indication of that. What John Hine told me was that when he went in to say, Ralph, we're leaving. We're really leaving. Um, this is, you'll, you know, how are you going to get home? Ralph said, just tell Ross to come back at such a, such right. a time right. and pick me up. Right. He, he kept right. saying that. And the other thing you should know, you know how Ralph has that iPhone that he's madly in love with, that he plays with like a baby? Yeah. So we wondered, what, you know, he's got my cell phone number, he's got Ross's cell phone number, and he's got Howard's address in there. He's got this thing that he's in love with. Fucking thing runs out of batteries. Oh, you're yeah. kidding. That's so, why That's another great part him. of the story. Yeah. Oh. So, so we all decide to get him on a speakerphone and find out what's going on. And we tell him, hey, you know, you're being an asshole. You, you, Artie went in and he goes, what? He claims he, he doesn't, doesn't remember? remember. I said, so what did you? What are you on? What kind of drugs are you doing? Because yeah, that ain't from drinking. What's wrong with you? He says, I Where's swear you? I didn't take, I smoked a little weed at the concert, I drank, and that was it. I said, when's the last, what's the last thing you remember? I said, do you remember sitting next to Paul McCartney? And I, it was me, you, and Paul McCartney in the third row, I said. Uh -huh. And we were, you know, having a great time listening to Don't Come Around Here No More, the last one. And he goes, Art, I, I don't remember standing next to you and Paul McCartney. I totally would remember that. Which explained to me why he wasn't that into him, but but uh, he, there was no him, indication of that that night. He seemed to be all right. So you know? I said to Ralph, "Why didn't she go to a hotel? Oh, there were no hotels. Because there's tons of fucking hotels. Why wouldn't she go to a diner and just wait till you know I get right. up at six o'clock in the morning? What are you doing? He goes, "I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing." 
Somehow he latched on to some guy. Yeah. yeah this is, is the this mystery guy? thing. That he was and, driving around with. And because his iPhone, the, the single biggest advancement in the history of technology, <laughs> that he can't call anybody, he borrows the guy's cell phone to call <laughs> Howard. <laughs> So now the guy has Howard uh, in his phone. Yeah. So yeah. clearly, clearly the guy knew Ralph was. Of course he knows Ralph and That's Howard. why he's doing all. And they're blowing up and down. And and he, Ralph got out of the guy's car at one point and started yelling, "Does anyone know where Howard Stern lived?" Uh, and he yeah. said, How "Fuck do you it." Know that? He because did? Ralph told us he did it. He goes, well, "At some point, I was desperate, dude. I'm sorry, but I was desperate." Whatever he was on, he must have come off. But he, he got claims... next to a very big celebrity's house who lives next to Howard. That was like a landmark. Uh -huh. There's another sort of very big celebrity yeah. there, and uh, as there are all over the place. And so he knew that was close by, and we we're like, well, then you couldn't get it a little. It's only like a little ways further. He's like, no, I couldn't do it. I was yelling at Howard's name. I called him from this guy's cell phone. We go, who was the guy? How did you leave the guy? He's like, I have no idea what happened. <laughs> Somehow I got on the jitney, the bus, back to the fucking uh, yeah, we, city. We don't believe any that. We were like, we, what jitney did you get at, you know, 4.30 in when the morning? he's back in Jersey City, he, he did had get back. to be on a jitney, But right? he found a guy. He found a guy that was going to take him from the club. To around to the neighborhood of your around. house, drive him up and down the road, yeah. and then take him back to a place where the guy knew there was a bus route could get. Yeah, instantaneously, he's in, in, supposedly stumbling, blackout drunk. He finds a guy to, to, and oh, he also tried to get into a hotel. He goes, the hotel had no vacancy, so he he gets in, he finds that information out. He he makes it somewhat back to Howard's house, makes phone calls, figures out his cell phone's dead. Gets to the fucking bus stop. I couldn't do that coherent. <laughs> but he's a train wreck. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, it's like... So, so, and then I said, Ralph, do you remember... He goes, by the way, did someone give me money? I have a stack of hundreds. <laughs> and I said, Ralph, I said, I gave you 300 bucks. I said, you don't remember that? I put it right in front of your face. I go, dude, this is money for you to get on. He goes... Uh, yeah, he goes, actually, thanks for doing that. I didn't have a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, but meanwhile, here's the kicker to that part of the uh, story. So he knew that I gave him the money, and I said, yeah, Ralph, that was me. And he goes, oh, thanks. That was nice of you. you know, so. Well, no, no. He Is said he, he didn't remember back? you gave him $300. Right. He said, I said to him, do you remember already giving you $300? He goes, oh, is that how I had a pocket full of money? Right. Then we found that out on the phone. He said, oh, thanks. Yeah. You know. But did, did he so, say on the phone that he was going to give you the money back? No, uh, he never said that. He never then, said that. So here's. The, so listen to this. When's that going to happen? So now I'm packing Ralph's bed room up, uh, which, by the way, is like spread out all over the house. I mean, like he he. he so it wasn't he was, just in his room. You had to go all over. It was a one. It was just in his room, but he like he like he like luxuriates and gets everything out and unpacked, and his books over here and his this and his that. It's like he was there for one hour. You know what I mean? Right. He was just there for an overnight visit. And he really, did, he really did leave a lit cigar on a, yeah. like a teak bar. No, no, no. It actually wasn't lit. It, it, was, was, it was out. But it was out. So but how still. did Beth yeah. pick up for him, packed for him, went, got a shirt out of a closet, figures out where his other shit is, and put all these great homemade cookies oh. they had, packed them up and put them in the pan? You actually responded to the cookie request. Yeah, yeah he yeah. actually so gave him up, cookies. So we pack up his bag, and I go, now Artie's got to schlep Ralph's bag. Right. Real neatly. Real, I mean, a packed up fucking bag waiting right. for me to take it back to Ralph. So After all this. Artie decides that he'll make it easy for Ralph, because Artie got a car to take him from the helipad to his house. Well, uh -huh. Well, yeah, what happened is, so now I get, I have Ralph's bag, okay? And it's like one of those sort of, you know, lazy Sundays where, you know, you're hungover. What do I want to do? Uh, me and Gary get the helicopter back. So, um, and again, the guy, there was an issue for the guy because I thought you were three. He goes, no, we're only two. And you could tell some, some the guy had to change something. He goes, oh, whatever. I wish you would have told me that. So, uh, Ralph inadvertently fucks up that guy's day in some way. So, we're on the helicopter, which is the greatest ride ever. And in the middle of the helicopter ride back to Manhattan, I go to Gary. I go, listen, after all this bullshit. I can make Ralph's life so easy right now. I had my guy who always drives me, my driver, Herb, picking me up at the helipad in Manhattan. And I said, um, he actually doesn't live that far from Ralph. Right. I, I could just tell the guy to, I'll give the guy Ralph's number, and I'll give Ralph his number on his answer machine. And I'll say, guys, hook up at some point during the day. My driver will hand deliver you the bag, Ralph. And, of course, though, he, he charges me for a ride. For of that, course. Right? You know, okay. So Gary had some great advice. He goes, okay, number one, you shouldn't do it because fuck him. But number two, if you do do it, it's out of your hair completely because you know he's got it. Now Ralph has a deadline. Ralph is skipping to it because he's got to get to California. He needed shit in that bag for California. 
So I agreed with the second part. I said, fuck it. I don't, I don't want this in my head. I call around from the helicopter. I leave him a message saying, look, get in touch with this guy. He's going to have your bag. And a Lincoln, your bag will be driven in a Lincoln Town car to, to you. your house. I tell my driver when we land, I go, look, take this to this guy's house. He's like, fine. And he didn't plan on doing anything else on a Sunday. It was a special Sunday ride. Right. And I got must get charged about $40, $50 for whatever that is. And I don't want the guy to do it for me for nothing. So uh, so Ralph calls me back when I land. He goes, dude, thanks so much. Um, that was really, really great. The guy fucking took it right to me. And I really need all that shit because I'm going to California tomorrow. And uh, he goes, by the way, I gave the guy a few dollars. And I go, oh, that's nice. That's that's nice. You gave the guy a few dollars. He goes, yeah, so, uh, so thanks, man. And uh, I said, well, have a good time in California, I guess. And uh, he goes, great, I, I will. Thank you for everything. Because uh, by now he realized he was wrong. He goes, look, I'm not really mad about last night. I'm sorry you had to, you know, give me the $300. He even re-brought it up again, $300. Right, right. Now, knowing he's going to California, he says he gave my driver a few dollars as a tip. Right. So then we just uh, we just hang up, and he's going to California. I say, good luck, have a good time. I call my driver. I go, did he give you anything for me? And he goes, no, he didn't give me a package for you at all. He goes, he didn't give me any money to give back to me. He's like, no. Nope. And uh, I go, what did he tip you? And he goes, not much. He goes, they're like under 10 bucks, just a few dollars. And, uh, you know, I don't know the exact number, but Ralph might dispute that. I got a check from my guy. But the point is, you know... Now, am I am I right in assuming this is Ralph's mindset? Because this is what pisses me off. He's going to California. He doesn't have a lot of money on him. He figures, unless Artie brings it up, I'm not giving him back the 300. I got 300 cash on me. I'm taking this to L.A. Absolutely. And uh, fuck it. Yeah. You gave it to him, Artie. Why would you want well, yeah, it back? You just gave him the money. That's Artie's right. fuming mad because, and rightly so. Oh, absolutely. That, you know, dude, where's my 300 back? Right. I he gave it did to that out, the, out of the goodness of his heart because right. he cared about oh. Ralph, and Ralph is taking it. Right, I wouldn't Artie. even say, even if he said to me, look, I needed it, I used... What's the jitney? Fifty bucks? It's, what, it's a hundred. Right. What, so he would have said, look, here's... I, I don't, I'm low on cash. Here's the balance of the 300, but... And again, I'll give Ralph a chance to explain himself, but it re I started overthinking, and I really got fucking mad. I said his mindset was totally that. Artie's not bringing this up, so I'm not going to bring it up. Right. I'm going to L.A. I got an extra 300 bucks. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm keeping it. After his bag got hand-delivered, Ralph cost me $350 yeah. on top of whatever, you know, the, the helicopter would have been. And uh, not, uh, not until he didn't thank me for the helicopter, by the way, until he made this really cheap fat joke at lunch we were all having lunch and he makes uh -huh. this like dumb fat joke that i did i, I was yeah, sort of pissed i was aggravated by it and i don't care about fat jokes obviously but something about it rubbed me the wrong way and ralph could see i was pissed and then he went oh by the way Art, thanks for the helicopter that was really nice yeah <laughs> and uh you know so again it's like i, I don't know i just um, it's that sense of entitlement with money and uh it's not about the money of course but just uh, he's gonna claim i forgot art I forgot, or, or... Of course I was going to pay you back. Is there any way I let him on in thinking you don't have to pay me that money no. back? I don't think no. I said that. No. no. And, in fact, I want to ask you guys a question, because Ralph got mad at me on a wrap-up show a couple of weeks ago. He said that I'm the one who started this rumor, uh, a, a fact about him that's wrong, that he has a sense of entitlement. But doesn't everything in that story show... He feels he has a right to be in the helicopter, a right to have his bag delivered Everybody with cookies, by the way. but Ralph knows that he has a sense of entitlement. But how do you not he know? He wouldn't even recognize it because he's so entitled. How does he not remember the whole night? Because he's blacking out. But Howard, a couple hours later, when you're like that, he a couple yeah. hours later he describes to the longitude and latitude where all the shit is in his room. Yeah. I got stuff a little bit to the right there. There's a shirt but in the closet. And a black guy, I don't remember, had a shirt in a fucking closet. But he wasn't drinking then. This is, you know, you got him before and after blackout. Mm -hmm.